In the book of Acts, the apostle Peter, at one point, God performs this miracle through him, and this big crowd of people gather around. He starts preaching to him. And as he's preaching, Peter says this. This is Acts 3, verses 19 and 20. Peter says, Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Christ, who has been appointed for you, even Jesus he must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. It says repent. Now, to repent means to turn from our own way and to turn toward God in obedience. Did you notice how Peter combines those ideas? Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that, and he lists several things will happen, and one of those things is so that he may send the Christ. He may send Jesus. Peter implies that there's something about our obedience to God that can make Jesus' return happen more quickly. Our obedience or disobedience can affect the timing of God's blessing in our lives. Did you know that? Not just in regard to the second coming of Jesus, but in regard to all sorts of things. Our obedience or disobedience can affect God's timing. Do you remember the, how the Israelites were led by God and through Moses out of Egypt? And within a short bit of time, they were on the doorstep of the promised land. Do you remember what they did? They refused to trust God, to keep their faith in God, and they, they chickened out. And God said, okay, well, back to the wilderness. Back into the, the period of refinement for you. This biscuit's not done yet. You're going back in the oven. And the Israelites had to wait for 40 years before the fulfillment of the promised land. For 40 years. Our obedience or disobedience can affect the timing of God's blessing in our lives. So, how can we speed up or hurry along the second coming of Christ? What can we do? I, for one, would like to know how to do that. Would you like to know how to do that? Okay, maybe not. I admit when I was younger, I wasn't interested in doing that. I was saying, Lord Jesus, please don't come back yet. I've not been married yet. I've not had sex yet. Don't come back. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Now, I don't know what it is in your plans, but you may have all sorts of plans dancing around. Well, I want to get this done. I want to get that done. I want to have kids. I want to have grandchildren. I want to have whatever. We get our plans. We're like, oh, Jesus, I want Jesus to come back, but not right now. Well, you know what? The older I get, I want Jesus back now. Every day when I watch the news, and I'm a news junkie, I'm, all, I'm watching the news too much. And when I watch it and I see what's happening in this world, it's like, oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. So I don't know whether you feel that way or not, but I want to know how we can speed this up. How can we hurry along the second coming of Christ? Did you know that Jesus himself told us? He did. Back in Matthew 24, in that lengthy discussion, Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus said this. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. He just gave it to us. There's a secret. The, world, the gospel will be preached to all nations and then we, the end will come. Now in the Greek language, which is the language this was originally written in, the word for nations here is ethne. And it is the word from which we get our English word, ethnic. So when Jesus says the gospel needs to be preached to all nations, he's not talking about to the peoples of all governments. He's talking about all ethnic groups. Sometimes we call them people groups. All ethnic groups, all tribes of the world need to receive the gospel before Jesus is going to be willing to come back. Now, of course, there can be hundreds of ethnic groups or people groups within a single nation, right? So how are we doing? How, what kind of progress are we making as the people of God? Well, according to our Interna International Mission Board, there are over 6,600 unreached people groups in the world today. Wow. Now, I know that sounds like a huge number. But with increases in technology, radio, 
TV, the internet, and through the work of thousands of Christian missionaries all around the world, Baptist missionaries as well as missionaries from all different areas of faith and within the body of Christianity, we are making progress. As a matter of fact, we here at Berea Baptist Church a while back felt led by God to adopt one of these unreached people groups, a group in Southeast Asia. And this year, Lord willing, we are going to send two different teams to help begin this work in that people group. Lord willing, I'm going to be on the October team, the team that leaves thin. Please be praying for us. I know you've been supporting us in all sorts of ways. Please continue to support us and pray for us and participate. Berea Baptist is in on this. We're part of the movement to speed along the second coming of Jesus. How about that? That's pretty cool. You didn't know Berea Baptist was doing that, did you? Did you know Berea Baptist is making Jesus come back quicker? Jesus said that the end will not come until all people groups of the world hear the gospel. Listen. All this end time stuff, all these prophecies, all these details... We get so concerned over all sorts of little prophecies about the end of time. Has this prophecy been fulfilled? Has that prophecy been fulfilled? But we can get so distracted by prophetic details that we forget that this is the only prophecy, the one Jesus just gave us, this is the only prophecy about the timing of Jesus' return over which we have any control. The fulfillment of this prophecy is dependent on our obedience. We began this sermon by reading from Acts when Jesus said that just before he ascended into heaven, he gave last-minute instructions. Do you remember what those were? He said, Be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When we pray, Come quickly, Lord Jesus. I wonder whether or not Jesus looks at us and says, You want me to come quickly? Share my gospel. Be my witnesses. A witness is someone who simply shares what he or she has personally experienced. It's not that complicated, folks. This isn't rocket science. It doesn't take a seminary degree. It just takes someone willing to tell Jesus' story and their own story. Here's how I came to know him. That's it. In this sermon series, we've been trying to gain a deeper understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've not been doing this just to stuff our heads with more knowledge. You know why we've been doing this? We've been focusing on the gospel so that we will be better prepared to carry the gospel to those who don't know Jesus yet. Whether they're across the street, whether they're sitting in the pew beside you, or whether they're on the far side of the planet. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're focusing on the gospel. Christians are so prone to just sit and soak and sour. Feed me, feed me. More teaching, more teaching, more teaching. Well, when do we do anything with it? That's why we're here. <laughs> the last note on the note sheet is this. It is not God's will that we should just sit and wait for Jesus to come back. Amen? Folks, Jesus is coming back one day. He is. Even though we don't know exactly when, his return will be global and sudden and surprising. Are you ready for the day of the Lord? Are you ready to face God? Because you will one day. I will one day. If you are personally ready, what are you doing to help others be ready? What kind of witness are we being for Jesus? I have this thing in my mind of some of my friends looking at me on that day and saying, you knew about this? You knew about this? You didn't tell me? Folks, when you truly accept and truly believe the gospel of Jesus, you can't but help. To sh you, you, you can't help but share the good news of Jesus. You can't keep from doing it if you truly believe it. If you've truly accepted it. Man, when you know something good, you can't keep it to yourself. When Felicity and I found out that we were expecting our baby girl, we kept it to ourselves for a while. 
But goodness gracious, my tongue was beating against the back of my teeth to tell you. When you've got good news, you want to share it. 